the Irish guy and right let's take a look at the Premier League games this week the Prem catch up right let's go West Ham 2 Arsenal 2 it's over it's done Arsenal's title bid oh no this is a team who've now thrown away a two goal lead twice in the space of a week you can't do that when you're coming up against Man City throwing away a two goal lead at Anfield is one thing but leaving West Ham with a 2-2 draw 2-0 up and coasting at the hammers I'm sorry 2-0 up after 10 minutes of the match against the West Ham team who last week conceded 5 at home as Arsenal's title challenge really being thwarted by David Moyes the only guy in the entire division who was also managing in the Premier League the last time Arsenal won the league this is like when Arsenal drew 2-2 two -two with Birmingham in 2008 when William Gallas started crying on the floor this is so damaging this wasn't supposed to be the story Bakaya Saka the epitome of mental strength recovered from that horrible penalty miss for England to suddenly become one of the most reliable penalty takers in the world now here he is missing another crucial penalty but some Arsenal fans then decided to question that oh why not give the penalty to Gary Jesus let Jesus take it what's going on um Jesus scored six penalties in his career sure He's also missed seven. He has literally missed more than he scored. So what is this nonsense? He even missed one against Lucas Fabianski. While Saka, before this game, scored six, missed one. So relax. Oh yeah, immediately after this game, the word bottled was trending on Twitter. But they're not done yet. Make an antenna. Who am I to give you footballing advice? But for the big crunch game against Man City at the Eddie Hat, park the bus. Ah, uh, if I was the Gunners board, I'd actually see if I could swing some managerial loophole with the FA. Just bring in Josie Mourinho for one match. Offer him a Premier League winner's medal, £50,000, and maybe a slice of barbecued pig to eat. Because of our sole dream of winning the league, you need a point at the Eddie Hat. Otherwise, you're done. This is exactly like when Liverpool played Chelsea in April 2014 and Brendan Rodgers set up his team to win when a nil-nil would have done. Then Stevie G fell over, you lost the match, and everybody's head exploded. What Rodgers needed to do was just put 10 men behind the ball and just play for the nil-nil. Although, really, looking at the lineup at BBC, I mean... Was the journalist drunk? Because they seem to think Mamadou Sacco played in midfield, that Martin Skirtle was a left back, with a centre back pairing of John Flanagan and Stevie G. What? What? But seriously, Arteta, you can't go to the Eddie and try to win. You leave yourself exposed, you'll get picked off and get your heart broken. But if you dig in and go defensive, then. Who knows? I mean, Thomas Frank and Frank Lampard have both left this ground with the results this season. If both the Franks can do it, why not Arteta too? Bye, but that's it for you here that hit that subscribe button. This is weird, but. I think this channel, I want to go head to head against Rory Jennings. That's the man who said Haaland would flop. So as punishment, we have to beat him to 300,000 subscribers. I believe in all of you. If you're new, hit that big fat red subscribe button. And we, as a community, me and you, if we do topple Rory Jennings, then trust me, we're going to have a 24 hour live stream where you can ask me anything. And I do mean anything. But we have to beat Rory first. Hit that subscribe button, you legend. Nottingham Forest nil, Man United 2. Oh, and Nottingham Forest are so unbelievably toothless. 24 goals in 31 games of football is pretty spineless. I mean, five forwards were signed this season. Five. But here, Man United got the job done with ease. Anthony chips in with another goal. They controlled the game. Diogo Delo scored another goal. Keiro Navas once again showed the reflexes of a cat. Honestly, at the start of the season, this match was pinpointed in the Forest calendar as the one where Dean Anderson and Jay Lynx would prove Man United wrong that they let them go. Uh, it was going to be a 1-0 Forest win, right? A Hendo penalty save and a Lingard wonder goal, right? Yeah, the reality is that neither man played and this big Django-esque revenge mission was really Really just a boring damp Sunday afternoon squib. But lads, that is zero wins in 10 games for Forrest. Not only that, but they only scored seven goals in those 10 matches. I like Steve Cooper, I really do. But if he was sacked this week after that run in a relegation scrap, I don't even think I could really defend his case. I don't think I could make a passionate video and sit there saying, Oh, what a disgrace! Not even if they brought Patrick Vieira through the door, because that run. That's really not good enough. Aston Villa 3, Newcastle 0. Aston Villa are unbelievable. I'm sorry, but when did this happen? I'm genuinely at a loss. I am almost speechless. When Unai Emery took the Villa job, to me, it was a bit like casting the bloke who plays Yoda of Star Wars as the next James Bond. To me, this is a serial winner manager at a club allergic to success. To me, this just did not fit. I mean, Emery's first game as Villa boss was traveling to St. James's Park 
Twitch's team can see four. He was sitting in the crowd that day, watching his new club versus the one who he turned down the previous year. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if he started immediately crying on the phone to his wife. I mean, leaving Spain for Birmingham, a town where most people look like zombies with the flu. It almost looked like a horrible decision for the man. And especially returning to a league where he'd already failed. For this, this run of form since February 25th is flawless. That is now seven wins in eight. I mean, they've only conceded twice during that run. I'm sorry, what? Tyrone Minks began the season with a former Rangers manager publicly calling him out, almost questioning whether he had the backbone of a burnt pancake. But I mean, look at him now. Aston Villa absolutely butchered Newcastle. I don't care what he's done for England in the past. If Gareth Southgate continues to choose Harry Maguire at the expense of Minks when this titanic brick is arguably the form English centre half in the world, then Southgate probably does deserve to have an egg thrown at his eye. And Ollie Watkins, here he was taking two past Nick Pope to make that 11 goals in 12. I mean, I've always thought that Watkins was pretty average. He's a former Brentford striker who scored goals in the championship. We've seen what happened to those guys in the past. Andre Gray, Scott Hogan, Neil Mopé. Honestly, buying strikers from Brentford. It's a bit like repeatedly eating from the same burger van. Despite the fact, you know, every time you do, you spend the night vomiting on the loo. But Watkins, this run of four, he is dangerous right now. And honestly, this blows my mind. Because back in May 2016, this was a relegation battle. New Gals were recently coming off a run where they'd lost 6 and 7, while Villa had lost the last 11 games. But well, here we are, just 7 years later. New Gals had just won 5 in a row, and now Villa have won 5 in a row. I'm scared. I'm honestly scared because Villa, this is Man City levels of win. I mean, if they keep on beating teams, if they beat Brentford, Fulham, Man United, Wolves, Tottenham, Liverpool and Brighton, which is very possible based on form, then they will wind up at 71 points, which will qualify them for the Champions League. Villa under Emery. This is mental. Chelsea won Brighton too. Lads, this week, I'm going to take a look at a video I did last summer where I predicted every new transfer who would flop for their clubs. And... Um, Let's just have a little window into what I said about Brighton then, shall we? Brighton, Julio and Cizo. Pretty simple this. Brighton have paid £10 million for a Paraguayan wonder kid Julio and Cizo who was born in 2004. I mean, he won't score a single goal all season. Next! Right. Oh, well done. Well done, Irish guy from the past. Not only am I wrong, but who do you see so? Has just stuck one in the top corner of Chelsea's net from 30 yards out. What a goal! But Chelsea, I feel so embarrassed for them. In the space of less than a year, Chelsea have given Brighton £80 million for Mark Cucurella, Graham Potter, head of recruitment Paul Winstanley, I and am five Brighton coaches. They effectively gotten Brighton as a club. And yet, Brighton rock up to Stamford Bridge and dominate. 57% possession of the ball, 26 shots to 8. I mean, they had 10 shots on target. Chelsea had two. Brighton had eight corners to two. You'd think Chelsea had a man sent off. Roberto De Zerbi absolutely ran tactical rings around Frank Lampard. This was so embarrassing. Lads, if you look to both starting 11, let's be real here. Brighton had a push, might have one player who'd get into Chelsea's team. Alexis McAllister. That's the only one. I mean, lads, Chelsea starting 11 cost 590 million pounds. After an hour, they were able to bring on a substitute. That substitute is the fourth most expensive player in the world. I mean, the guy standing just 10 yards behind him in the field is the fifth. Oh, lads, this is grim. This is seriously rough to watch. Before this season, Brighton had not beaten Chelsea since 1933. But this season, the aggregate score is Chelsea 2, Brighton 6. How horrific is that? We are halfway through April and Chelsea have still yet to hit 40 points in the league. They are 11 points off Aston Villa. And Aston Villa team has spent the first third of the season in a relegation battle. It's just... Words can't comprehend just how bad Chelsea are. Tottenham 2, Bournemouth 3. Tottenham are a mess. This is a joke. Whose idea was it to say Christian Stellini in charge? There's a man who actually looks like a human-sized elf. To the extent where his nephew is probably called Legolas. Honestly, he looks like something off a creepy horror film. I mean, how much do we really know about this guy? In 2017, he was sacked as a manager in Italy's version of League One. But I mean, look at it. I wouldn't be surprised if he's someone who chucks on a screen mask at night and decides to bite the head off Buddy Rabbits. Why did Daniel Levy decide to give him the job? Flushing out Conte is fine, yes. But Stellini is like that moldy, sweaty pair of underpants. That Conte just left under the bed. Stellini is a Conte clone, except he's not a world-class manager. I'm just saying, Levy, Brendan Rodgers is free, single, and would probably have snatched your hand off at a two-month caretaker gig. But now, oh, this was brutal. I love that. Imagine if Bournemouth versus Tottenham was a two-legged tie in the Europa League or something. Because Tottenham snatched a dramatic 3-2 last-minute win at Bournemouth in October, and now Bournemouth with the exact same thing at Spurs. Over the two games, 
Tottenham versus Bournemouth is the most entertaining clash in the Premier League all season. This was wow. Solomon sticks Tottenham 1-0 up. And then the Cherries rally go 2-1 up. Via goals from Matthias Vina and Dominic Solanke. Um, Davis and Sanchez got booed off the pitch. Then Tottenham push. Richardson scores an equalizer. Um, and then it's chalked off for offside. Let we are just one month away from 50 million pound Richardson. Having gone the entire season without scoring a single Premier League goal, you'll be the most expensive attacking footballer of all time. To go an entire season without scoring a single goal? I mean, what's this gonna do for a street cred in Brazil? How is he ever gonna be able to look Neymar in the eye if he goes an entire Premier League campaign without a goal? I mean, that's two years ago, Carlo Ancelotti was challenging him to win the Premier League Golden Boot. And now, he's been outscored by James Tompkins. But Arnold de Juma then wakes up to finally score his first Tottenham goal, an 80 minute leveler against his former club. And that will be the moment for Spurs to kick on and absolutely crush Bournemouth in the last minute. I mean, Gary O'Neill would have had flashbacks to the last time they were in North London, and Reese Nelson absolutely crushed them like a bag of Maltesers under the wheel of a bus. But no, Bournemouth break. Dango Otara cuts in and smashes one past Hugo Lloris. What a win for the Cherries. But lads, this is what happens when you pit two inexperienced backroom coaches against each other. Because lads, go back to last summer. If someone told you that Christian Stellini would be taking on Gary O'Neill as a manager, you would assume this matchup was in the dregs of the Cypriot League. I mean, why not? They both got significantly less experience than the likes of Neil Lennon. I mean, last summer, both men were far more equipped to be Uber drivers than Premier League managers. And so, are we really surprised by this here? It was a chaotic mess where tactics went in the bin. Everton won Fulham 3. If I was an Everton fan, I'd be terrified right now. This is a game Sean Dyche could not afford to lose. You're coming up against a Fulham team who are already on the beach. Their most dangerous goal scorer is banned. Their manager is sitting in the stands. There is no excuse. And Everton team fighting for their lives should have been winning this match every single time. But Everton inexplicably roll over and lose 3-1. Goals from Harrison Reed, Harry Wilson and Daniel James putting the Toffees crowd to sleep. Fulham season is over. They're safe. They're also not getting into Europe. And they had just lost five games in a row. This is Dyche's most worrying result and actually, on our good old Shaw, Everton have only won one of the last eight games. Are we really sure that Dice is going to keep them up? This man has got to pray that he keeps Everton in the league. Because I'm sorry, if he gets them relegated, he'll be sacked in May. And after being binned up in Burnley in 2022, and then dumped by Everton in 2023, I think Dice would then fall into the same category as Chris Wilder, a once highly competent coach, but now, I mean, the guy was really sacked after just one month at Watford. Ozzy Dice, you better hope you keep Everton up. Otherwise, your career is done. Southampton nil, Crystal Palace too. I don't get it. I honestly don't understand this. Roy Hodgson is a severely old pensioner who probably can't chew solid foods. And yet, he's coming to a Palace dressing room, a team who didn't win any of the last 12 league games. And under this fella, some of more wrinkles than an unironed shirt. He's won three on the bounce. Two classy goals with Eric Yeti got the points. But Southampton, you only have yourselves to blame. Boardroom decisions have relegated your club. Sacking Rafa past Luton in October was a decent decision, yes. But you chose to appoint the Luton Town Manager, someone who had been binned off by Stoke in the Championship. That was incompetent. As was then choosing to replace him with Ruben Sellers. Look. Club physio. By the way, he's only taken two points from the last available 18. I don't understand. Why did you not actually appoint a senior manager? I don't rate him, but even Dean Smith was available. Why didn't you give him the Southampton job instead of the bloke who used to manage the Valencia under 18s? Sorry, Southampton. But you've relegated your club. Man City 3, Leicester 1. This was the most pointless and dead second half I have ever watched in my entire life. It really was just pointless. The match was over inside the first 10 minutes. John Stones volleys in a 5th minute goal. Erling Allen scuffs in a penalty before adding another on 26 minutes. This game was so wrapped up. Pep even took him off at half time. And yes, I suppose Leicester officially won the second half 1 0 when Kalij Iheanacho tapped in, but sorry. Man City were pretty much asleep. I know there's a run because I suggested that Anthony should have appointed Smith, but Leicester, surely you can do better than this moldy old man? This guy is a North City flop, and he is half the coach Brendan Rodgers is. You decided to downgrade your manager while sitting second bottom of the league. That is risky. That is really risky. Wolves 2, Brentford 0. I mean, Wolves are pretty much safe now, right? But what was weird about this is that. Diego Costa actually scored in the Premier League. Seeing him score for Wolves looks a bit weird. And anyway, that's more. Let me know what do you think. Let me know in the comments below what did you think of the Premier League game week. Let me know in the comments if you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to give a like, share, subscribe, and as always, I'll talk to you in a while.